Hello and welcome to some more Seduce Me at the Otome. So we're just exploring the uh, different endings that are, that are available, because why not? We'll start <coughs> with a brand new game and yeah, we'll just call ourselves... Um, name is Saint, why not? Yes, yes, isn't it? Alright, so yeah, we'll just start with a school scheme. School scheme? School. Um, Saint, should I say? And yeah, we'll go with. We'll start with Naomi, actually, why not? This time around. Ah, fine. Be lame. Indeed. Alright, now that we've decided. Okay, so we basically decide on the uh, name for some company. Mean you both. Yep. She gave me a smile as if relieved by the fact that I felt the same way as she did. It's Susie, Naomi. Think about it. Very true. <laughs> Man, and away you she goes. Alright, so then she just screws us around there. Alrighty. Mac and cheese. Uh, what Naomi's having? Why not? Tuna sandwich sounds pretty good right now, anyway. Once we got our food, we settled down at one of the empty tables, putting our backpacks aside to finally dig into the food. Suzu leans back in her chair, tilting her back. Oh, it's whatever, it's um, same stuff. Now we've got the funeral, the grandfather, the father. Fun times. And we'll go with Suzu. Actually, no, 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 he's right, actually. Man, come on! See? She knows about proper public taste. Oh, yes. Proper lady and all that. I know how to be a lady. I'm sure. Guys, I'm going there after school today because my parents want me to get used to living there. And yeah, they basically run to good old Lizette. And I don't know what difference really this makes. We'll try again just a hell of it. We are not. Okay, about grandpa. Yep, in we go. We encounter the uh, five lads there. Should we actually ask for an apology? Let's see what'll happen. Okay, you should at least apologize. That would suffice. As if to himself, he muttered something under his breath. Why do I always look like the bad guy? <sighs> Apologies aren't my forte, but I'll try my best. Well, with a preamble like that. Okay, fine. I'm sorry. Sorry about what? I'm sorry for kissing you like that. I went too far. He sighed and ran his fingers through his hair. I didn't mean for it to turn out that way. It's just... I act on impulse, okay? It's difficult to control myself and... Yeah. <sighs> what am I saying? He's saying he's got no impulse control. Anyway, it's okay. I get what you're trying to say. Thank you for the apology. Yeah, no problem. Damn straight. Anyway, if you try to pull any funny business in the future, just a fair warning. I know Taekwondo. And then we basically go on from there. And yeah, we'll protect ourselves. Why not? Do your worst. No, I wasn't going to attack. I'm assuming going the other way gets us a more positive response from him. So we get Sam. Um, Something else happening there, some other storyline there, but that's alright. And yeah, you can have it this what? time around. And what? Hey, wait a minute, what is this in regards to? Ah, no, to hell of you. Maybe another time. Indeed. And let's be cool. You're sure I'm sure quite the charmer. Yes, I am known for that. As much as I do appreciate the constant compliments, you don't have to keep talking to me like that. Like what? He battered his eyelids as if he had no idea what I was talking about, and I couldn't help but laugh. Well, like you're trying to get into my pants half the time. I can assure you, I'm just a lover of beautiful women. Something tells me that there's more to it than that. For a moment he looked away, losing a bit of his smile. Before I could question it, though, he turns back to me with a new teasing smile. Did you want there to be more? There we go. I didn't want to hit him, but I didn't know how to react, so I couldn't look at him. He merely chuckled again in my ear. <laughs> Sorry. You just look so cute when you're blushing. God, he's really laying it on thick, isn't he? I fell to my face, heat up, simply from his words. Then I then felt Eric take my hand and kiss it gently. I hope you'll enjoy dinner, however, my dear. Okay. Drew my attention back to the dishes. I was both intrigued and slightly scared by the amount of food they made. Yes, yes, great amount of food. We'll talk to them a bit more. 
Okay, and what is this so? Ah, yes, couldn't hold it in. Um, but I did. Why not? I merely smiled before I took some food for myself. There was one piece of food that intrigued me and was barely touched by the boys. It looked like green pasta with shrimp over it. Ha! Huh, what's this? That miss is a shrimp pesto dish. Pastas are my specialty, so I'm positive you'll enjoy hmm. it. That actually doesn't sound that bad. I twirled around, or rather I twirled some around my fork and tried it. I could feel my senses open as my taste buds practically melted in delight at the taste. It was creamy and savoury, almost impossible to describe. This is amazing. I'm glad you like it. At least someone here in the room has taste. Oh no, he didn't. Matthew and Sam glared at James before they continued to eat. I couldn't help but smile at their brotherly quarrel before eating the rest of the pasta on my plate. James seemed to really hold high standards for his brothers, though it wasn't my place to question why. Eventually, we all ate dinner together. It was just strange eating with them. We get a message of some description, walk around, and we'll say they're in your head this time. Susu reached out and poked Matthew on the forehead, making him stare cross-eyed at her finger. Uh, hello to you too. Seems real to me. They're not imaginary. My God, what a cover. Um. Yes, felt helpless, and yeah, that's why they said say that they're the um the help. Uh, actually, no, we've got Susan and Scrot to help them. Yes, yes, I'm sure. Yes, they'll work everything out. And yeah, let's see, I still can't... Actually, wait, what is that with us two? Chili peppers. Right. Still can't get over that, Susan. You never eat spicy things, Anderson. You don't know how it feels. No knows. Anyways, after the mall, what do you want to do? We could go to the Pink Lady Cafe and chill out with Kay. I'm sure she'd love the company. Can't remember who Kay is again. But we have to stop by the arcade. They have this new game out called Orion. You get to con Okay, yep. Let's go to the cafe this time. Jesus. Alright, so we hit the mall and I walked around a bit as we planned before driving over to the Pink Lady Cafe. It was, it was a small homestyle cafe with a lot of pink. Too much, in fact. And when I say a lot of pink, I mean a lot of pink. The crowd, the cafe was crowded, but we definitely caught Kay's attention as we walked in. Hey girls, hey! Oh my gosh, I'm so happy to see you! Have a seat, I'll be with you in a minute, okay? And there she is, as busy as usual! Told you we should have gone to the arcade first. Naomi glared at Suzu before leading us to a table to sit at. Suzu sat across from me as Naomi sat to my side. After a couple of seconds of settling into our seats, Kay slid into the empty, empty fourth seat with a smile. How's everything been? Crazy. Life's always crazy with you. <laughs> but I can tell Susu's not happy to be here. That kind of breaks my heart, you know. I'm sure. <laughs> Susu smirked and gently punched Kay in the shoulder, in the, in the shoulder making Kay laugh. Naomi and I chuckled at the sight. Kay and Susu were like sisters, wild and crazy. However, Kay didn't have any known relatives, so it was always nice to see her connect with Susu. How about you, Naomi? Have you figured out your problems? No, and now's not the time to talk about them, Kay. Mm? Naomi keeping secrets from us? That's a first. <laughs> she holds more than secrets, I'll tell you that much. I see, let's see if we can pry them from her, perhaps. You guys! Don't worry about it, Naomi. You can tell us on your own time. Naomi stared at me briefly before smiling in relief and happiness. Thanks. Kay giggled as Suzu rolled her eyes and groaned. Eventually, the four of us just started to chat and talk about random events that happened to us. I decided to not speak about the boys and just focused on school. Truly, though, it was relaxing to feel somewhat human again, without thinking about incubi or anything of that sort. Simple young adult problems were already enough for me to handle. We eventually lost track of the time and wound up staying longer than we expected, making us unable to stop at the arcade yeah, didn't see that coming, before going home to dress for the housewarming party. Kay, as much as she wanted to come, had other plans, but wished us the best. Also saves them from, from having to uh, rewrite the, uh, 
the housewarming party scene with uh, Kate there as well. So there you go. <laughs> anyway, it had arrived. And I had arrived. In the mirror. And... So. Prepared. Yeah, let's just say... Nah. I didn't feel confidence at all. Something about tonight frightened me. I couldn't tell if it was a fear of my dad or of the guests that dad surely invited, but something about tonight's party left me beyond nervous. The other boys smiled assuringly at me, which made me feel a little better about everything. I looked at my phone and marked the time. Almost right on cue, the doorbell rang. I gulped. I could practically feel my dad's aura from behind the door. And I think we've already seen this. Yep. Uh, Alright, well, we'll pretend to be responsible, why not? So, living on your own. Okay, doing my best. Grandfather, thank you. Yes. Company. It depends on who runs it. Philanthropic. Let's see, yeah, why not? It's a possibility. Right. Alright, let's see what Daddy Old think of that. Yeah, whatever. And no, we'll not to him. We're rude. Actually, we'll be silent as well, why not? I apologize if I made you uncomfortable in some way. Andrew then chuckled nervously, bringing a soft fist to his lips to cover his laugh properly before smiling at me. Okay, yeah, yeah, whatever. And we'll stay put. Okay, and away he goes to help him. Oh, that's right, then we get attacked by these guys. And uh, let's see. So we did this, we did this, why doesn't do this? Malik growled at me, walking right up to me and leaning close to my face. I glared back, feeling my courage skyrocket. Since when does a little stain like you give orders to a guy who can rip your pretty little head from your body? Indeed. Actually, we've already seen that. Uh, oh, we actually got a time limit here. Uh, run, actually, why not? All of a sudden, I felt so. Oh, for fuck's sake. It's the same bloody response. Oh well, I guess you got us there. There's some girl coming in to stop him. He's a demon. Let's see. We worked on homework. We've explored the house. Let's make some coffee. I decided making coffee was my best bet in surviving the rest of the day. Why not? I haven't had a coffee in forever. I got out of bed and made my way to the kitchen, unconcerned that I was in pajama pants and a tank top. I rummaged through the cabinets for a coffee machine and any makings for coffee. Surely my grandfather had some. A French press? Well, it's better than nothing. Not, not, not fancy enough, is it? Anyway, as I began to make my coffee, I checked my email and texts on my phone. No new important emails, no text messages. I sighed. I quickly made my coffee just how I liked it and sat on the counter. But then I began to wonder. What would happen? Or, or rather, would this happen every day? I let the question linger in my mind. For a whole morning, I did not think once about the boys or Malix. Everything was peaceful. Everything was average. Nothing magical or dangerous or unusual. Boring, eh? <laughs> I simply drank my coffee as I let the thought marinate in the back of my mind. The brain of steak, perhaps. I returned to bed, feeling the weight of the morning drag me under my covers to try sleeping again. Really? After having a coffee? But alright, I had energy, but I wanted more sleep. It was Sunday, nothing was happening tonight. Come on, eyes, back to sleep. I shut my eyes and tried to slow my breathing. So we've already seen that. Won't bother disturbing them. Go with... So I think we... It doesn't really matter too much. We did pizza before them. This. I think we'll do simple chicken and rice now. Got to keep their energy and strength up with protein. Took my time to make almost perfect chicken breasts alongside some rice. Cooking wasn't hard unless you didn't know what you were doing in the first place. Indeed. Place of food, blah blah blah, and... Huh, just go to the room, why not? So yes, um... Let's go to... Oh, we can actually go to Grandfather's grave or stay in the room, interesting. Well, actually, just because I'm curious as to what all these different things will do, let's just save. Yes. <clears throat> things to do. All right, let's go to the uh, Pick Lady Cafe. I arrived at the cafe, ready to relax. I didn't want to be stuck at home on a Sunday. Besides, the cafe always had something new to drink, no matter how often you came. I entered the double doors and looked around. Not many people were in, and Kay didn't seem to be working today. Oh well, she can't always be working. 
I uh, made my way to the pastry bar and took a look at what the cafe had to offer that day. There was always something new, no matter when you came. Really? Alright, which is what's kept people coming, myself included. As I browsed the delights, my mouth began to water. I had just eaten earlier, but the cafe's pastries always looked good enough to tease your appetite back into a hungry state. Both the smell and the look of each dessert was carefully crafted to appease. You didn't regret buying one and biting into it. Finally made a selection and headed to the cash register to purchase my treat. What can I get for you? Hi, I'll take a couple of chocolate and raspberry macarons and a pink lady latte, please. Coming right up. Lily was Kay's assistant, who mainly stuck to the cafe's finances and computer work. However, when Kay wasn't in, Lily took over becoming the face behind the cash register, who gave you what you needed. Indeed. Lily, where's Kay? Kay had to fly out to New York suddenly. She said it has something to do with delivering something special to someone. I'm not too clear on the details. Hmm. Drug dealer, I bet. Okay, sounds like fun. Wish I could go to New York. Don't we all? Here you are. Enjoy. I took my order to a far corner table and got comfy. The Pink Lady Latte was a cafe special that everyone adored. It was a normal latte with a very subtle raspberry flavour. The foam was pink too. Hmm, not really sure if I like the sound of that. The raspberry sounds good, but anyway, before I could indulge however, a voice stopped me. Oh, hey! Well, fancy seeing her, her there. I looked up to see Nomi enter the cafe with a smile towards me. I smiled back, not expecting to see her. Oh, come on, a bit. Where, where, what else are you going to see? Anyway, hey, Nomi. Mind if I join you? Not at all. Nomi nodded before quickly getting herself a coffee, cake slice, and a latte and joining my table. I've been wanting to try their latte for a while. Is it any good? <laughs> Alright, will be nice. I like it, it has a nice raspberry flavour. Naomi gently blew over her latte to cool it before sipping it, smiling at the taste. Mmm, this does taste good. I'll have to get this from now on. The raspberry is a really nice compliment with the coffee. Indeed. I giggled. Naomi loved food when it wasn't when it wasn't made in the school cafeteria. She wanted to own a restaurant one day, but always focused on studying the business side. Naomi had natural cooking skills that made grandmothers seem like novices at making you amazing food. You should get macarons next time with it. The raspberry macarons definitely bring out the flavour in the latte. I should. You must. Anyway, Naomi slowly grew a Draw a look of thought on her face as she stared into her latte, probably thinking about food again. It was during these moments that I got to see a simpler, almost beautiful side of Naomi. She was very smart, smarter than me. However, she always held serious seriousness very close to passion, dedicating her heart to her dream. It was enviable. I sipped my latte and ate a macaron before speaking and breaking her thoughts. Thanks, by the way, for coming to my impromptu party. I knew it was last minute or all. Naomi broke away from looking at a drink to looking up at me in surprise, then with a smile. It was my pleasure, really. I mean, our pleasure. Suzu came too, and all. <laughs> Naomi blushed a bit before clearing her throat and taking a sip of her latte. She then looked to me again with a slight frown. But hey, how are you holding up from that? I'm sure meeting all those business people was tiring. Oh yes, very much. Heh, <laughs> it wasn't anything I couldn't handle, it was just the suddenness of it that tired me out. Well, I'm sure you Indeed, did great. yes. It was a great party. The food was amazing. Damn straight, although I don't think we got to see any of it. But yeah, I mean really, who the hell puts their daughter in into a new home the uh, day after their grandfather dies and then gets them to to a housewarming party for big business people the day after that. I mean, really, that's just a bit of pressure to say the least, but anyway. It was amazing. I slowly began to remember the party, remembering how I felt alone throughout it. I wanted to be with my friends, but I had to put on my business air to impress my guests and my father. Did I try too hard? It was supposed to be a simple party, but it felt like a job interview. Before I got too deep in my thoughts, I felt a hand gently cover mine. I refocused my thoughts to reality, seeing Naomi gently holding my hand. Hey, I know that look. You're about to overthink it. Don't. You did great. I'm sure of it. 
that I stared at Naomi, unsurprised that she caught into my thoughts, and happy to know that she cared. Thanks, Naomi. Naomi smiled and blushed, giving a small nod. She was absolutely adorable when she smiled like that. I didn't know how, but her smile was able to make the room lighter. Clearly there's some sort of bioluminescence going on there. Naomi then pulled her hand away, placing it back on her latte with her other hand and cupping the mug and, sipping, and sipped her drink. Naomi licked her lips and let out a sigh. This is really nice. A relaxing Sunday afternoon at a cafe. Indeed. <clears throat> don't know why the hell that made me chortle or whatever that word is, but anyway. Yeah, it is very nice. Anyway, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I just want to save. Whatever. <laughs> well, there you go. It's the simple pleasures, I suppose, isn't it? Ah, it's relaxing afternoon. It's almost like a day. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah, it's called the first one. Why not? Go for the whole nine yards. Although we don't use um, imperial measurements here in Australia, but whatever. All of a sudden, Naomi's face turned pink as she looked at me. Confused, I tilted my head and gave her a quizzical look. Naomi, are you all right? You're turning red. I could imagine. Naomi must have snapped out of a trance. She found herself and tried to calm down from whatever was on her mind. Uh, well, oh, what could that be? No, no, I'm fine. Really. Just a little warm, that's all. <laughs> I'll bet. Naomi brought her latte up to her mouth and began to drink, practically chug it down. It was actually kind of cute how flustered she got from a simple statement. I giggled quietly to myself before si sipping on my latte. Naomi and I eventually lost track of time and wound up chatting until the late afternoon. When the cafe wasn't hopping, Lily would join us and we'd talk about silly things like TV shows or movies. Oh, wow. It's getting late. I gotta get home or my mom will flip. Like, totally. Oh, okay. Would you like a ride home? That would be great. Thanks. We quickly headed out with Nomi driving me home. It was nice to be alone with her rather than the rather than have the explosive sizzle around. I preferred Nomi's calm logic anyway. Calm logic of the Vulcans. The remainder of the night passed by, surprisingly uneventful. They continued to train, got some stuff here. Alright, oh, this time around we'll stand up and walk away. We'll be calm and logical ourselves. New wasn't going to bring myself to her level. She was a bully, but I was not going to let her get to me. I had to be stronger than her, and only then would I have beaten her. I stood up and brushed myself off, pretending nothing had happened. Anderson, you okay? That was a pretty bad fall. Yeah, I'm fine. A fall like that is nothing. I merely smiled at them, not wanting to let them know the pain rushing from my body from that fall. My arms were quaking, my shoulders were pulsing, but I remained content-faced. Perhaps steely-faced one. Well, content-faced. Don't hear that expression very often, but I suppose it's there. I quickly gathered up my belongings and nodded to my two friends. Come on, we'll be late for history. Hmm, alright then. Susie and Naomi looked at each other before frowning and nodding to me. Nomi and Suzu Nomi and Suzu flanked me as we began to walk to class away from the gaggle of bullies. As we walked, I could barely see Suzu flipping the middle finger to the group behind us from the corner of my eye. Friggin' bunch of set feet lickers. <laughs> Indeed. That's gross, Suzu. It's true. It's all OMG! Lisette is the best! Let's follow her around <laughs> because we obviously don't have lives. Indeed. Naomi and I couldn't help but laugh. The group behind us, however, did not like Susie's words. Oh no. At least my dad doesn't screw around in the black market to keep a stupid casino running. Oh, there we go. Suzu stopped. Naomi and I stopped as well to look back at Suzu, who was completely red in anger. Suzu slowly turned ahead to the group, glaring daggers at them. The fuck did you just say? Yep, we're gonna get a boss battle, are we? I had to act fast. I placed my hand on Susie's shoulder and gripped tightly, knowing she could try to push my hand away. Yeah, indeed. Susie, they're not worth it. Let's just go. No, I think it's about time we taught them some manners. Interesting. So if we don't fight Lizette, then Susie's going to fight someone instead. Alright, uh, then I looked at Lizette and her group. Lizette had a widely amused smile on her face, which irked me to no end. Nevertheless, I knew that fighting wasn't going to get us anywhere. Let's go. Let's go. I grabbed Susie by the shoulder roughly, 
pulling her back to Naomi and me. Suzu tried to step towards the group, but Naomi held onto her other shoulder. We held onto Suzu, who fought against our hands as we marched to class. Surprisingly, the rest of the school day went off in another incident. We got uh, kidnapped by What's Her Face. We're fighting him off. No way. We kick the shit out of him, essentially. There's a gunshot. And there we go. We get rescued. Actually, wait a minute. Are they supposed to be behind each other like that? Anyway, whatever. They're, they're away. They're going. Oh, yeah, that's right. Then we get Diana coming in. Diana, whatever. Oh, what have we got here? Pretty pretty little two shoes, aren't you? Apparently. I moved out and stood from the bed, still glaring at Diana. Why are you here? Is this going to skip now? Yep, it is. Interesting, so it actually did affect a bit of the dialogue there too. Anyway, whatever. So let's save the skin. How many oh actually no one got plenty more. Alright, one more slot. Huzzah. <clears throat> so this time around we'll just um actually what happens if we fight? Do we still die? Yes. Yes we do. Alright. So much for just being good goody goody two shoes. Alright, so we'll give up the memories. Yep. Away we go. Ah, here we go. Scoops up my bag and headed downstairs to the dining room. The room was empty and I felt hungry. I needed to eat something. I looked to my phone and saw a text I must have completely forgotten about. Nomi asked if I was okay. If I was okay. What did she mean? Did something happen yesterday? I tried to remember, yeah, because I'm... Oh, never mind. Alright, I tried to remember, but for some reason, yesterday's events seemed to blur. And be oh, whoops, no, they seemed blurry and almost blank. I remembered going to school, dealing with Lizette, then going home. I don't remember, however, exactly what... I'm oh, sorry, I don't remember how... I don't remember, however, what exactly went on. Must have been... Or else I wouldn't be safe at home. I rubbed my head, trying to shake out exhaustion. Damn studying. I sighed and texted back. Sorry, I forgot to text you back. Everything was fine. See you when you get here. I made myself some quick toast. Yep. Oh, here we go. History wasn't as boring as economics, but I still managed to space out in that class just the same. Okay. Nomi seemed to be very tense, focused on her desk more so than usual. I was almost tempted to poke her and see what was wrong. My phone, though, vibrated in my pocket. Thank God I set it on vibrate before class. I pulled out my phone and checked it, seeing a text from Suzu. I began to text back, suddenly getting going into a text conversation. Hey, what's up with Naomi? I don't know. Mm, hope everything's alright with her. This isn't like her at all. Same here. I looked over once again at Naomi. She was intensely scribbling in her notebook, almost obsessively so. The grip on her new purple-looking pencil was almost tight enough to bend it each stroke she made of it. Wait a minute, that sounds exactly like that other route with, um... Suzu. By the way, Kay kinda let me in on what's going on with Naomi. What's going on with her? Really? I couldn't believe it. Was Naomi having romance troubles? I looked over once more. Something made my heart skip slightly and sink her again. I was worried, yes, but for some reason I felt a little angry. Why, or rather, who did Naomi have a crush on? Jeez, who could it possibly be? <laughs> anyway, why was she so nervous about it? Why couldn't she tell me? wonder. Anyway, I put my phone back into my pocket, ending the conversation. Hopefully Nomi wouldn't explain things, or that Nomi would explain things to me soon. I was almost abnormally curious about her and this mystery crush, which couldn't possibly be the uh, player character. Time continued until the end of the class period in that exact status. Wait, time continued until the end of the class period in that exact status. Okay. Uh, God, I would have used the word manner, maybe, but alright. Naomi held her tense ground, focusing on nothing but the incoherent scribbles on her paper. They look at that, just like with Suzu. But anyway, while Suzu and I watched on in worry, not caring for the class we were in. As the bell rang, Naomi stood up suddenly. I mean, does this also mean that Suzu is not particularly worried about the uh, casino, then, in that case? I mean, really, that seems to have changed. But alright, 
Oh, rang now, Mr. Up suddenly. I, I need to go. See you in economics. And away she goes. And for the first time ever, Naomi was the first person out of the door. What just happened? She ice skated away. I don't you know. We'll chase after her. I needed to see what was wrong. Naomi was important to me and I needed to help her. I instantly grabbed my things and rushed out of the room. Whoa! Anderson! Hey! Nope. We're sk ice skating away as well. I wasn't listening. I needed to get to Naomi. The hall was full of students, which made spotting Naomi a little harder. I wished I was just a little, little taller. Naomi. I began to push through the crowd, trying to find a trace of her, her hair, her shirt, anything. I managed to get a glimpse of her white bow, instinctively following it down the hall into a classroom. Naomi's class was the other way. Where was she going? <laughs> well, don't tell me her family's got a casino as well. Anyway, I continued following and peeked into the classroom, seeing no one else in there except Naomi. Well, who to think? What shocked me was seeing Naomi standing over an empty desk, whimpering and almost sobbing. I didn't know what to do. The world behind me in the hall went into slow motion as I stared at Naomi's back.